So I've had my CNC for a little while now and finally getting around to making a case to keep the computer from sitting in a cloud of dust all the time. I went back and forth on whether to move the computer to another room and run a bunch of wires but decided to make this case and keep the computer in the shop by the CNC. So it just made sense to use the CNC to cut out all the parts to make the case. I don't have a vacuum table, so I use carpet tape to hold the MDF down, which has been working really well so far. I use the tab features that keeps all the parts connected, which helps to keep them from moving around while everything's being cut. Then I use an old chisel to break the panels apart after the machining is done. Once I got everything off the CNC table, I decided I wanted to put location grooves in the doors so that I could put some gasket material in there to keep the dust out when the doors are closed. You, you'll see what I mean in a bit. I took the opportunity to paint the inside of the panels before assembly just to help myself later on in the build. This will be the frame for the filter. I just went to Lowe's and found a filter that fit the size box I wanted to build. I decided not to get crazy with the dados so I just used glue and nails for the frame to hold it together. As the saying goes, I just use the nails to hold everything in place until the glue dries. I don't think I'm going to take the nails out though. Here I'm just cutting some scraps to use as reinforcement since I didn't use any dados in the build. I put a false floor in the box so when all the components were installed there would be a place to bunch up all the cables. There ends up being a lot of wires and this should work to help keep everything looking organized. And this just finishes up the painting for the rest of the case and the doors. I didn't have any short screws for the hinges, so the screws I used poked through the door. So I just ground the backside flush when I was done. I marked the hinge location and then used my trim router to recess the hinges in the case. And I just used a filler block so I had a place to balance the router. You definitely have to pre-drill MDF whenever you're putting in screws like I am on the end of the board here. I used acrylic for the windows and the doors, and as long as you go relatively slow on the table saw and go relatively slow on the drill press, everything machines really well. Don't forget to pre-drill or everything will crack like crazy with this MDF. I really snuck up on putting the screws in with this acrylic so I didn't take a chance on cracking anything. Here's the weather stripping that I was talking about earlier. It goes in the grooves that I put in at the beginning. This is just door weather stripping I got from the hardware store. Works really well.
When I started thinking about building the case for the desktop, I knew I wanted a filter in it. I also knew I needed a way to move the air through the box, but didn't know if I wanted the fans running all the time. I ended up finding a fan system by the cooler guys that has a thermostat and temperature sensor all built into one unit. The setup I have has the fans come on around 89 degrees and then shut off once it gets down to 81 degrees. It hasn't been hot enough in my shop lately, so I'll have to wait for some hotter weather to really test the system out 100%. Here I am wiring up the thermostat and controller. The fans plug into the controller as well as a temperature sensor to let the fans know when to turn on and off. I needed a way to hold the filter in place so I used a piece of plastic sheet I had in the shop to make a cover with some slots to let the air pass through into the box. It may seem obvious but I'm using the fans to suck air in through the filter and out through the fans. I didn't really think about the overall dimensions of the case when I started building it. I just know I had plenty of room under the machine for the box to live. It ended up about three inches too wide to fit through the frame rails, so here we are doing it the hard way. This is just one of those live and learn moments, I guess. Now that I have everything in place, I can run all the cables in their final locations. I had to modify the outlet pass-through parts to get the large CNC data cable into the box, but we got it all sorted. Once I got that all sorted, the USB and power cables fit in really easy. There was a lot of extra cable that I just bundled under the false floor, which hit a lot of the wires, which made everything look fairly organized. I just p-clip the power lead to the case to keep it from flopping around. And I powered it all up and it works really well.